We're about to begin the new parak, the last parak in the Mesechta, 73b4. Before we begin, I point everybody at Tysus. Everybody look at the Tysus. It's just a nice wrap up Tysus. The Mishnah starts Yom Hakipurim, says Tysus. Say the Mesechta, the order of our Mesechta. Tehila at the beginning, Nokat Zayin Yomim Kaidim Yom Kippur. It began talking about the halachas of the seven days before Yom Kippur started. Vahadar, then it continued, Nokat Lel Yom Kippur. It discussed the night of Yom Kippur. Vahadar, and then it continued on, Nokat Seido Avoida Sayoi, the Seido of the service of the day. Vahashta, now that we ended, now we're at the last parak. Nokat halachis, it brings the halachis hayoim of the day, le'inyan iser veheter, with regard to what's permitted and what is asur, that means that's noigeya in all places and at all times, whether the Beis Amidosh is standing or not standing, whether it's in Eretz Yisrael or not in Eretz Yisrael, these halachis apply. Says the Mishnah. Yom Kippurim on Yom Kippur, Aser, it is Aser, it's prohibited by Achila v'Shesio in eating and drinking, Berechitza in washing oneself, Uvesicha and anointing one's body with oils or creams, Uveneila sandal in wearing shoes, Uvetash v'Shamito and having relations, Bahamelech and the king. The Hakala and a bride, Yechatsu Espineim, they are allowed to wash their faces. The Achaya Tinol is a sandal, and a new mother is allowed to wear shoes. Divrei Rabbi Elezer, that's the words of Rabbi Elezer. Rashi explains four lines into the Rashi in the new parak. Melech, why is a Melech allowed to wash his face on Yom Kippur? Darkai the Shavacha, because his way. And his glory, Leois Na, is to look good. Shenema, Melech Biyop Yob, Techezeno Necho. A king in his beauty should be seen by your eyes. Vakala and a bride, Siri Chanoi needs to look good. Asha Tichshav Al Balel, until so that. So that what it calls she should look beautiful, so that the relationship should develop between them. The whole shloishim yoyim lechupasa, and thirty days from the day that she gets married under the chupo, he kariya kalo. The whole first month she is called a kalo. Divrei Rabbi Elazar, this is Rabbi Elazar. Rabbi Elazar goes on all of these halachis. The melech, the kala, and the, and the mother who just gave born. And the reason for the mother is because the floor is cold and that it's hard for her. It's harmful for her, a cold floor. Divi Rabbi Elezer. But the Chachamim is surin. The Chachamim asked this. They say, they what it called. Now, there is a machlaikis, whether it's in all three cases that the Chachamim disagree with Rabbi Elezer. Or it's only it, or is it only with regard to a new mother, or it's also as well with the king and a new bride? That is a little up in the air, and the Rishonim are busy with that. How far does the Istuch Chachamim go? Ha'oichel kikaseves agasa, a one who does eat the equivalent of a large date, kamoya uchegar inosa. The equivalent of it and its pit, so not just the size of a of a date, but you have to add in the volume of the pit. Lugma, or one drinks an amount to fill his cheeks, and from here it's mashman not one cheek but both cheeks. Chayiv is chayiv karis. Kolo oichlem mitstarten likoyseves. All whose food combines to equal the volume of a large date, that means he doesn't eat it in one shot, 
but he eats it kiday achilas pras in the normal time that it takes to eat a shia pras of a bread, which is about nine minutes, three to nine minutes. The chola maskim it starts in the mole lugmos. And all beverages that combine to equal the filling of his cheeks. But eating and drinking do not combine. Those are two separate things. Eating is the size of a large date. Drinking is the size of filling up, is the volume of filling up two cheeks. And those two shiurim do not mix. On this comes the Gemara. Also. The, 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 the Mishnah started Yom Kippur, Osir, it's Osir, which means, seems to mean, the word Osir seems to imply that it is only a lav, that it is only a, uh, an, a prohibition. Onus karas to, yet we know that eating or drinking on Yom Kippur is chayiv karas. Most Rishonim feel, based upon this, that only eating and drinking, if one eats or drinks on Yom Kippur, Yechayif Karis, the other stuff of Rechitza, Sicha, Nila, Sasandal, and Tashvish Amita are only Midura Bonon. There are Smachtas Baalmo. The Rambam, however, disagrees and he says all five are actually Chayif Karis. But with regardless, we know that the point, the bottom line here is the word also seems to mean it's a mere prohibition. And we know, in fact, that it is a chayiv karis. Amar Rab Elo says, Rabbi Levi, Tamer Rabbi Emil, and others say it's Rabbi Emil. Loi nitzcha elu lechatsi shir. The Mishnah is only needed for the case of a half a measure, where one eats less than a date's volume of food or drinks less than a cheekful of, of drink. All right, so so we're saying that chazi shir is oser mina a half of a shear, a half of the measure is oser is prohibited mina toiro. Not just it's not chayiv karis. You don't get cutting off. You're not chayiv karis. You don't get the death penalty in this sense. The spiritual death penalty, what you get is an Isim in That's good according to the Mandi Amadama Khatsi Shia Osim in That half a measure is biblically uh, prohibited. You just don't get the terror. You don't get the worst, uh, you don't get the worst punishment. That what is Osim in is the complete measure. A half a measure is nothing. It's not the full measure. Therefore, biblically, it's permitted. Of course, it's it, 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 it's permitted. It's obviously prohibited rabbinically, but biblically, it's permitted. My yikala maybe what will you therefore explain? Say the itma because we learned chazi shear regarding a half a measure of isadika food. Okay, of is of isadika food. Rabbi Yochanan and Oma also in Torah. Rabbi Yochanan said it's a prohibition from the Torah to even a, eat a Less than a kazayas of forbidden food. We're now on 73b5. Reish Lakish Omar, Reish Lakish says, Muta minatayrit. That minatayrit, it's muta, because the iser, the prohibition is only on the full, on the full measure. Reish Lakish, and so we said, Ha, nichal rabbi aichanan. Now, our interpretation of our Mishnah. That the word osir, which means only a mere prohibition, is letting us know that chazi shir is also in atayra. Even a half measure is also in atayra. It just doesn't get krisos. It doesn't get karis. El reish lokish ma yikel meima. But according to reish lokish, who says chazi shir is mutam in atayra. So therefore, what's the language of osir, which seems to only apply a regular prohibition and not karis? How do you explain our Mishnah? Says If Shlokish is Maida agrees, Sha also midrabon that Khatsi Shir, while being allowed biblically, is clearly prohibited even rabbinically. And he's and he's translating the Mishnah as telling us about the rabbinical prohibition. 
On this, Ihachi Ibazai, if that's true, Loinus Chayabale Carbon Shvur, that according to him, one who swears to eat half a measure of prohibited food and then eats it should not be liable to bring an offering known as the Carbon Shvur for transgressing the oath because you only bring Kabonis on an Isodurai so. You only bring sacrifices on a prohibition that's biblical. Aloma Tanan, if that's the case, why did we learn? Shavua Shulayaychal, if a man made it, I think, a Shavua, an oath not to eat. Va'achal Nevelis Terefish, Gotsam Yeramasam, and he ate the prohibited food, like Nevelis, an animal that died, Terefish, an animal that has an internal defect. Or Shkotsam Yeramasam, or disgusting creatures, or crawling creatures, chayim. He's chayim to bring the carbon shvua. But Rab Shimon, Paita, and Rab Shimon exempts him. Because since these are all prohibited foods, by definition, one who swears not to eat them has sworn to absorb the says of the Torah, the negative commandments of the Torah. And therefore, is not subject to the laws of the oath, because we all were mushfab mi Sinai. We all swore at our Sinai that we're going to keep the Torah. So therefore, automatically, you're under that oath of not to eat. That oath takes precedence over any oath that you then go ahead to say, "I will eat." That oath is not is not considered an oath. It's considered nothing. You didn't do anything. So Rabbi Shimon says you're potter. Am I so afraid to Gemara? Bahavi bought, and we asked regarding this Mishnah. Am I chayiv? Why does the Tana Kama say you chayiv? Because Mushpa me'aymer me'asinayu, he's he stands sworn from the time of Har Sinai, from the times of Har Sinai when we all swore to Har Sinai to uphold the Torah and keep the prohibitions. Therefore, there is already under an oath that goes back to Mount Sinai that you will will not eat from prohibited food. So if he makes an oath to eat prohibited food, it's a nothing oath. It's only Devarim Ba'alma, it's nothing. So the answer is, and Rabbi Shmuel and Rabbi Yochanan the Amri, and Rabbi and Shmuel and Rabbi Yochanan answered to this question, the Koilel Devarim Amutarimim Devarim Oasurim. Where the swearer included in his oath permitted foods along with the Jerry, sorry about that. My internet kicked me out. I'm back on. All right, just let me, if, uh, if you can, hook back in so you can give me the thumbs up that you hear me. Okay, I'm assuming that you do. Um, yeah, oh, okay, thank you. Thank you. So on this comes along Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Yochanan, the Amri. So Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Yochanan, come to answer this question. Of Mushpa by Mibarasina, and they come around it. Where the one who made the oath combined within the oath permitted items with non permitted items. So now it's all wrapped together. Now I understand why he would have to bring a carpet. Bereshlokish would say, Jerry, I got to take this call. Just give me one second. 